are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am DJ Quick. DJ Quick, who'd you have beside you? I have my homeboy, High C. High C, how you doing? Fine. Now you're known for your tune, I'm your puppet, right? Yes. Tell us about the puppet. Uh, well, back in the day when I was, uh, like yesterday, I was a teenager. Uh, I don't know, can you tell him a little bit about it? Hold on, you know why he can't talk? He need one of these, here, take Man, one. you ain't lying. Man, it, oh, it, it builds your confidence when now, your breath smells good. Now, speaking of these ah. there, DJ Quick, how's the BC Endo been treating you? Um, st I'm stuck. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Continuing on, praising High C, if you could, DJ Quick. A bit of background. Well, I grew up with him, right? He used to throw rocks at me on the, uh, on the playground in elementary school. And it, we ended up being, becoming friends because my mama told me that if you can't beat him, um, arrange to have him beaten. <laughs> wow. DJ Quick, what is the importance of the talk box and zap? Um, wow. That's big, Nargwar. That's, that's major. Um, look, um, well, to me the importance is because Roger taught me how to use it, I gotta keep it going only because a lot of people didn't really understand it. A lot of people try to mimic it, but they don't do it right. You have to use passion when you do it, and you have to really do it right. This is Roger Troutman of Zap. Yeah, the Roger Troutman, rest in peace. And my friend was wondering, what synthesizer setting do you use? He's dying to know there, DJ Quick. Tell him he needs to use, um, you oh, need to use a, oh. no, use a triangle, oh, look, look, look. He can control, <laughs> he can control, he can control the cutoff. But you use a, you use a sawtooth wave, um, triangle, triangle wave, sawtooth, get a lot of sawtooth going, um, and not a lot of low end because it's a, it's a voice thing. So if you use a lot of bass, you'll probably fl uh, fry the driver in the, uh, in the talk box. I mean, in the, in, the, in the component itself. So don't use a lot of bass, but sawtoothy triangle, triangle wave. DJ Quick, what was it like working with Shaq? Shaq! Man, it was fun, dog. Shaq is a big kid. Shaq is like, I mean, it, it, it's not like work. I mean, Shaq is just fun to be around, you know what I mean? And you did like two albums with him? You're on board for both albums? Yeah. I mean, he's my friend. So. And you also did some stuff with Deborah Cox, Canadian content! Oh boy. Yeah, Deborah, I had a crush on Deborah actually until I found out she was married. That sucked. So. <laughs> Are you down with Canada? What about you? Are you down with Canada, I see? Yes, for sure. Whitney Houston. You got down with Whitney Houston. That's pretty wild. What was it like working with Whitney? Well, actually, Whitney is like sis. You know what I mean? She's like, it's, it's not like work when you work with people that you like. And I don't try to work with people I don't like because the musical suck, the musical suffer. You know what I mean? Because if you don't catch the vibe, then it's like scrap it. Dr. Dre, for a little while there, you had some beefish action happening right there, DJ Quick. Man, no, that was, that was people in the streets, you know. Um, you, know it was, it was, you know what it was? It was all a conspiracy. It was to keep myself and Dr. Dre away from each other, not working together. So they'd go over there and tell him things that I'd say about him and come back and tell me things he'd say about me. When we found out it was all lies, we shut all of those people out and we got in the studio and made records. How do you get on Dr. Dre's good side there, DJ Quick? That's what I want to know. You're in beef in there with Dr. Dre and you want to win Dr. Dre over. How do you do that, DJ Quick? Um, you tell him how great he is. You tell him how nobody makes better beats. You tell him how he looks young. You tell him how, you tell him the truth. Did you bring up the world-class wrecking crew? No. That's his earlier band, right? What does he think about that band? How you know about that? <laughs> they're pretty crazy, the world-class wrecking crew. Pop and Skyler for knowing. I mean, you know, they're part of, they're part of um, West Coast hip-hop history. So, I mean, if I did bring up, I'd talk about, you know, like, before you turn off the lights, how groundbreaking that record was and how he discovered Michelet and how he had, like, a jump on mixing R&B and hip-hop even way back then in 1985, so. It's amazing, like, all you guys started out, right? Like, I see all you guys started out. All you guys started out, like you, Ice Cube, all those guys, and you're still going, Dr. Dre. It's amazing, DJ Quick. It's this West Coast water. I was curious about Dr. Dre's record collection. What's Dr. Dre's record collection like? Um, well, he bought a whole record store. That's what his record collection is like. And it's got some amazing records. Like, he can find you any record? Man, Dr. Dre will probably be producing records until he can't see no more. I was curious there, DJ Quick. What can you tell us about Blowfly here? This is, is this the idol. first oh, rapper? This is my idol. Of course oh. he is. If it wasn't for him, I would have never wrote Black... Can y'all edit? Yes. I wouldn't have never wrote Sweet Black Pussy had I not heard this guy. Wow. Weird world. And how do you, this, this is pristine, man. That's the reissue of Blowfly. So what can you tell the people about Blowfly and the influence on DJ Quick? Blowfly might be my uncle or something. He like started rap. He claims he started rap. 
Um, in a sense, he did. I mean, because he was doing it like, like early '70s, like, like when we get whoopings for listening to these records. He was doing it then. You know what I mean? And then Curtis Blow came out. That was like the second rapper I knew about. But Blowfly was the first rapper I ever heard. And then Dolomite. You gotta give Dolomite some props there too, eh? Rudy Ray Moore? Yeah, Rudy Ray Moore is tight when it comes to his voice and all that, but them movies, like, suck. Oh, come on, the human tornado! Oh, man, when they was doing that karate dog and they was like, ooh, wow, way back here. Mm -hmm. Man, shit. That movie was tight. Well, I am the human serviette, and I personally take insult to that DJ quick because he did the human tornado. He's the human tornado Dolomite. Man, he needed a better film crew. DJ Quick, what's it like in Compton going to the thrift stores? There's always these stories about the most amazing records in Compton thrift stores. Um, what Compton thrift stores? Yeah, are there any thr the Compton meat. thrift stores? Compton swap meet? The swap meet. I think it's swap meet. That was a long time ago though. Yeah. Like, are there cool records to be had in Compton? Yeah, if you steal them from somebody's garage, like, you know, all DJs did in the neighborhood. That's how we, that's how we had the fresh records, Roxanne, Shantae. You know what I'm saying? Uh, World Class Wrecking Crew, like you said, NWA. We had to steal that shit. DJ Quick, are you in the movies at all? What movies are you in? Um, none yet. But I'm gonna start, I'm about to start doing movies. Never any extra work or any soundtrack or anything? S soundtracks all the time. I mean, from movies dating back to like 1991, like Minister Society and even like more recently, like Training Day and stuff like that. And I'm about to do something with Chris Rock and his new movie, uh, Head of State with Nate Dogg. But, other than that, you know, just little stuff here and there. DJ Quick, the list of people you've worked with is incredible. We got Shug, Shug! Big Shug. Shug, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm Big hey, Shug. You gotta call him Simon. Now, what can you, what can you tell Canadians about Simon, Shug? <laughs> um, he'll knock your ass out, man. Dude is real heavy-handed. DJ Quick, you've also worked with like Tupac, Biggie, and El DeBarge! Well, not Biggie, not, not, not Biggie. I wish I would've worked with Biggie, rest in peace. But Elder Barge is hot, and Pac is, Pac was one of the fastest hip hop writers I ever met. I mean, he could write a song in like 15 minutes, where most of us need like a whole day, and we gotta take the CD home and make it a homework assignment. Pac can knock that shit out like right there. Well, thanks so much, DK, GG. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's all right, uh, Ardvark, I mean, Nard, Nardvark. It's the same, it's all the same. <laughs> Thank you very much for helping me with my spasm there. DJ Quick, though, lastly, just wondering, punk rock, what do you think about punk rock? Punk rock, some of it, one record in particular. Which which punk rock record do you like, homie? Just one. Yeah, man, I like, I don't know, I like the old stuff. The, uh, the big, what's it we made? The big beat? I got the big beat. Billy Squire. Billy Squire, there you go. That's punk rock? That, I mean, to us, it was loud and obnoxious, so <laughs> I think it counts. And you are DJ Quick. I just like to add to the people out there at all, DJ Quick. Mm -hmm. album. What would I like to add? Me? Go buy this record called Under the Influence. On that record, you'll hear Dr. Dre, Talib Kweli, Elder Barge, High C, Truth Hurts, Second to None. Did I say Pharrell Munch? Did I say Shaheem the Kid from Wu-Tang Clan? Did I say myself on the talk box? Go get this the record, y'all. I think she's yeah. on it. Yeah, Truth Hurts, I said her name. Oh, okay. And uh, this new reggae artist named Chucky that's taking the West Coast by storm, it's real hot. Why should people care about DJ Quick? Why should people care? Because I'm human, I have feelings. You got to. Thanks so much, DJ Quick. Keep on rocking in the free world and do-do-do-do-do. Do, do.